Hello, I'll get a request for to make this part right here. I think the hardest part is adding these little details. But I actually want to show you a way that you can use vertex paint to add patterns to different parts of your geometry. So I think that would be the best technique for creating something like this. So I'll just right click and hide this. Let's first create our pattern. So I'll just start with a plane. I'll just give it an equal number of length and width. So let's say 50. And I'll just center this. So this will be our bake plane. Now I'll just hold down shift and move this up. And this will be our actual detail. So I'll just select this polygon inset and I can just bevel and get this result right here. And I can just apply turbo smooth. I may want to first tessellate. Turn off tension, square. So you can get the kind of sharpness that you want here. I'll just go with this. And now I'll just move this up here. So now I will select the bottom plane, apply projection, go into the cage subject level and just move this up here. Pick and pick this detail. So now with this bottom plane selected, I can press zero to activate render to texture. And now projection mapping, check enabled, options, global super sampler, setup, enable global super sampler, I'll just use hammer select quality one. Now here in our height map, it's appropriate for us to pick the appropriate minimum height and maximum height. We can actually use these eyedroppers to choose. So for minimum, I'll click on the eyedropper tool and select this top face right here. Gives us 1.428. Now I can click on this bottom eyedropper for the maximum height and just select the top of this detail right here. That gives us 5.603. Now I can add height map. I'll just make it 512. You can click on these three dots to choose the name, location, and format. And then render to files only. And I'll just click on render. And now I can just close the render to texture dialog here. And I can just unhide all. And now I can just hide these objects. I've got the height map, this lays map that I need. And now I can model this object right here. So I'll just create a cylinder. Let's just say 16 sides. We're going to go for 32 as well. And now we can just select some polygons here and bevel. And perhaps move them down. Now right click collapse. And now I can go into polygon level, select this end gun, rapid tools and rapid quad cap. Do the same for the bottom as well. And now just insert some edges here for better subdivision. And now I can apply crease set, increase this number here, select. I want to select these edges as well. And create set, give this a crease value, and then open subdiv. All right, so there we are. And now I'll just apply the UVW map modifier to get a quick UV map here. I'll just use box, and by default, the channel was set to one. And now I can apply vertex paint by going to modifiers, pressing V a few times, and here's vertex paint. So here we're going to actually change how we want to see the vertex color. Shaded gives us the vertex color, plus we can see the shade here, the shadows and the highlights. Or we can use unshaded, which just shows the color with no lighting information. So I'll just use the shaded. So here we have two paint buckets, one for filling everything with this color and one for erasing the whole color. Then we actually have the color, paint, and erase.
So right now the color is set to black, so I'll just use the paint bucket tool to fill everything with black because we only want the top here to be white here because this is where we want those details to be visible. And now I'll just switch this back to white. And now I can use the paint tool to begin painting here at the top. You can see that the brush is too large, so we can press Ctrl Z and just decrease the size here. But it's very hard to limit the paint just at the top here because you see it's getting everywhere else as well. So just press Ctrl Z, turn off paint. We can go into the sub-logic level, vertex, face, and element. We can actually limit the painting to just a particular set of faces. So I'll just make a selection right here. Deselect. Deselect these two polygons. And now when I use the paint tool, you can see it's all limited to those polygons right there. You can get this effect right here. Now I can turn off. Now if you exit out of vertex paint, the vertex color is still visible. So before you go, be sure to use the disable vertex color display option right here to go back to a regular object color. So now I can just apply open subdiv, two or more of the iterations. Now let's set up the material. Here is the detail that I got right here, view image. Here's what it looks like. I can actually increase the tiling amount. Let's say 12 by 12. And now I'll create a composite map. And I'll plug this into layer one. And now for the mask, I will choose vertex color. There we are. I can plug this into bump or displacement. Now since I'm using V-Ray, I can apply a V-Ray displacement mod. I can just plug this composite map into the slot right here for text map. And now I can just scroll down here, keep continuity. Now here we have edge length. The lower this number, the higher the quality of the displacement. I can also decrease the amount here. And now I can test out the displacement here. So you can see now the displacement right here where I painted the vertex color map. This has wide and far-reaching applications. So if you've ever wondered how can you create these kinds of details here, they have a perfect method to do so. You may want to spend some time rotating the UV map to get this orientation or rotating the texture map as well. So you see this a lot on weapons where the grip will have some sort of dots here, some sort of pattern. And I have the perfect method to create these kind of details here without having to sculpt them and or anything else. Here is another great example. We have all of these details right here. So let's do another quick example here. I'll just start with a plane. Then I will just insert here. So now I can establish a curvature, let's say two iterations. And now I want to create those details only right here. So once again, I'll just quickly UW map. I'll just use planar in this case. Just make this a little bit more square here. And now vertex color. Let's first fill it with black. And now white, paint, increase the size here. Another technique I can use is if I just fill everything with black again. 
So let's say I go into face and I will select these faces here. I can also change the selection mode. Let's say this one right here. And now I can just go around here and select all of these polygons. All right, and now I can quickly paint white there. All right, and now I'll just exit out of the face level. And now I can actually use blur brush or blur all just to blur this a little bit. So this may be easier than having to carefully paint here. You can just paint using the polygons and then just kind of blur it a little bit. All right, and now switch back to disable vertex control display. And once again, I'll just use Rewrite really Displacement Mod. We're going to just set up your displacement in the material. And I can actually use the same composite map right here. Because even though different objects have different vertex color maps, this node right here just accesses all of them. So I can just paste the composite map right here and do a quick render. And as you can see, now we have this nice displacement pattern applied right here. So I hope you enjoy using this simple yet powerful technique to quickly displace certain portions of your geometry. Thank you for watching and take care.